Nope. Hey, how's it going you guys? It's James from James Jet House. Got my boy right here, Skipper. I'll take him out. He looks like uh, he wants to hang out. Um, so I did have someone ask me to make a video on how to breed crested geckos. Um, I don't think I've really gone super in depth, in, in depth about it, but I'll definitely do that in today's video. First off, what I want to talk about though is upcoming shows. I decided at the beginning of this year that I wanted to do a lot of shows. It is still the beginning of the year. I decided I want to do a lot of shows this year. That's where I have the most fun. I know that at the end of the day, I can at least break even on the shows. And if I break even and then I, you know, come back with more better breeding stock, better connections, and have met more people, awesome content for you guys. If I can do all that, have a great weekend in, you know, the bay or, you know, a couple hours away with my girlfriend and just have an awesome weekend, meet some people, sell some animals, buy some animals, all that stuff, see some animals. If I can break even doing that, I would do that in a heartbeat every weekend. So I have five to seven expos planned this year. Let's go through them real, real quick, real quick, stay with me. Um, February is the Cow Palace show. April is the Lodi show. May is the Pleasanton show. June is the San Jose show, which I hear and I haven't actually signed up for this one yet, so I'm kind of backing up. I hear from another promoter that this show isn't the San Jose show I've been to before. The guy putting it on is new. He's never been at a show. He breeds three dragons. He seems like a nice guy, but he booked his show in San Jose two months before the actual San Jose show, which I want to do that show as well. And I hear all the vendors are turning it down. So I don't want to sign up, expect to go, plan to go, and then have it canceled. So I'm gonna wait, you know, for a show or two and see what happens, kind of ask people around, all the vendors if they're going and what's going on there. But after that, after the, uh, there's there's the one in June and then there's a San Jose show in August. Then there's a Sacramento, pardon me. Then there's a Sacramento show in September. Um, I might share a booth at that show. I hear the booths at that show are very expensive because it's a very popular show. And then after that is the Chico show. And I think that's in November. And then we're back to February. I don't really think there are any shows in between in the area. There are a lot of shows I missed. Um, a lot of shows end up the weekend after a show, two hours the other way. And I'm not looking to do that at this point. I wanna, you know, I'm pushing myself very hard already by, you know, I did three shows. I like half vended three shows last year. I'm doing full on five to seven this year. I think that's a big jump. I'm not gonna push myself hard this weekend. Nevertheless, let's just jump into crested geckos and all about how to breed them. So right here I have my male. First thing you want to do if you want to breed crested geckos, you have to have a male and a female, right? So my male, you can see right here, obvious bulge, obvious male, super obvious, right? Females don't have this. You need at least a pair. Um, no matter who you are, there are, of course, there's always, there's always um, exceptions to every rule. So. I'm gonna say rules, just understand there are exceptions and you might see those on the internet. Don't go yelling at people, you know, oh, James said this and James said that and you're not doing how James said. There's other people, and of course, I've only been breeding for a year, so if you see other information, take that into consideration, you know? All sorts of other stuff is helpful, all sorts of other stuff um, might, might help you produce more eggs, I don't know. And if you find that out, bring it back, share it with me, I'd like to know. Um, there's all sorts of information out there that I don't see, that you don't see, that's sitting there waiting, but we don't know to look for it. Um, so anyway, you have a boy, you have a girl, make sure you have two tanks. A lot of times, people will keep them together year round, and that's something I can do with this male, but you don't want to do that all the time. It'll stress some of the females out, it'll keep some of the females really small. I rotate this male between these two tanks, and I'm about to add a third one down there. Um, I keep them about a week in each tank, and each tank, holds two females. You can usually get away with housing females together unless you have a very dominant female, which doesn't normally happen. Um, so in, a, in an 18 by 18 by 24, I recommend two females. You might be able to get away with three. 
it kind of depends how you feel as a breeder. Um, I have a lot of people lately commenting, talking about how I'm only doing it for the money and I should sell all my animals and stupid stuff like that. I kind of just delete those when I see them. I've been keeping reptiles for a long time and breeding for the past year. Um, I know how to read the animals. You have to know how to read the animals. I've got geckos in here that are 30 grams and I wouldn't recommend breeding a female under 35, but there's a gecko in here that's 30 grams and she lays good eggs every month. More often than my female that's 60, she's like 55, 60 grams, more often than that. It just is what it is, you know, every gecko is different, every situation is different. Um, get a feel for your animals and get to know your geckos personally. Especially if you're starting out and you don't have very many and don't start off too big. It's really, it really sounds awesome to buy, you know, 10 females and 3 males and all the cages and put it all on your credit card. But in reality, if you don't know, if, if you've never done it before and, you're not, and you don't have like a little bit of a startup, it's going to take you way longer to make all that money back. You're going to have, and by the time you learn how to like hatch the eggs right and do all that stuff, you're going to have so many babies, you're not going to be able to sell them. You're going to have all them sitting around doing all that. So anyway, you have your male, you have your female, and you have them in two different tanks, right? So first off, the way you want to set up the female's tank is I do a little bit of substrate just in case they fall, it collects the water, it keeps keeps the humid it holds that water it holds the humidity without you know being gross and just water sitting on the bottom I do a thin layer and then I do uh, a little Tupperware just a little square Tupperware a little tall um, I fill it with the same substrate it's it's eco earth it's whatever um, holds moisture fairly well and I cut a little hole in the top of the razor blade and the reason I do that is it gives the females a spot to dig and you know I put them in I go hey I want them to know this is your spot this is where you're gonna go if you need to dig you can go in here, it's dark, it's humid, you can dig. Everywhere else she can't dig. I've never had a female, and I've only been doing this year, again, but I've never had a female lay in this substrate because it's so because I keep it so thin. So your cage is set up right, and that's in the female's cage. Your cage is all set up. You have tons of coverage because you don't want the male and the female to constantly be together. The male might try to breed her too much. And you introduce the male. I guarantee you, you're gonna see some aggressive behavior. The male bite the female, the female might bite the male. You might have some tail drops. I've never had adults drop their tails on me. I bought any, any of my adults that have a missing tail, I bought them like that or they did it as a baby. Um, but you might have some aggressive behavior. You might hear some weird noises. Your geckos might get scratched up. I have a gecko that's pretty scratched up. I put this male with her and she's never seen a male before. She, I, they didn't know what to do. He was trying to breed her. She wasn't receptive. It is what it is. Your breeder geckos aren't going to be as pretty as the day you bought them after this. So you put your male in. I would, if you're doing this for the first time and your female's new and she's not a proven breeder or anything like that, most people start out, you know, they raise up their geckos, right? I would put the male in with the female for a day and a half to two days max. And then you take him out and you put him back in his cage for two to three days. And then you might want to repeat that once. And then after that, you start going a week on, a week off, a week on, a week off, until you start seeing egg production. Of course, the first eggs you get aren't going to be fertile. There's a chance they might be. Nine times out of ten, they're not going to be. And the male doesn't know what he's doing, and the female doesn't know what they're doing. They just know, hey, it's that time. Uh, my body's telling me to do this. I'm going to do it. And then they push out eggs. Maybe they're not fertilized. Maybe the female wasn't ready. All this type of stuff. So you're going to do that until you get your eggs, and then you're going to get your eggs, and you're going to put them in a little deli cup, and you're going to drill a hole in it so the air can flow, and you're going to put your incubation media. I use uh, Pangea Hatchrite or something like that. Uh, it's cool. It lets you know when it's wet. I keep a bunch of eggs. I mark them, and I mark the cup with the male, the female, the date, uh, if they both look good, and if I don't know the female, I put a question mark of who I think it is. You can usually tell the female will hang out right on the lay box for a couple days, before and after she lays, and that's just in my experience. Now, if you if you want to keep some geckos back, you're gonna have to raise them up a bunch. Crested geckos are really hard to tell what they're gonna look like as babies. You can kind of tell if they have a bunch of Dalmatian spots as a baby. They're probably gonna have a bunch when they get older, or if they have really nice stripes as a baby. 
it's just gonna get nicer. That tends to be how it goes. They just end up looking nicer than they did as babies. Um, if I see the female hanging out over here, I start checking. Usually when I feed every other day, I start checking. If I know I'm breeding, I feed every other day and maybe occasionally once every week or two, I'll skip a day. Um, I really want to get into the set pattern and if you plan on breeding, I recommend this as well. So I, I can get crickets Monday through Friday. I might work for very cheap. So what I would do is feed Saturday, skip Sunday, feed Monday, skip Tuesday, feed Wednesday, feed crickets Thursday, skip Friday. So there's a two day skip, but you feed crickets in there and then feed Saturday again. And I think that would be perfect for breeders. You want to, and if you're breeding, you definitely want to supplement with crickets or some kind of insect. You want to make sure they're calcium dusted correctly. And you want to make sure that female is getting all the calcium and the nutrients and the protein she can get because laying those eggs is stressful. Um, when my females lay eggs, they really don't lose that much weight. And I attribute that to me feeding crickets every week. Um, the calcium helps solidify the eggs and makes them stronger and the protein keeps the female up to weight and up to size to keep doing it over and over. I haven't gotten to the point where I've had to you know, keep the male out of the cage because the females are getting too skinny. I haven't gotten there, I haven't seen that, but it is a possibility and that's something to look out for. Now, as far as feeding, feeding the actual food, the, the, the fruit mix, if you will, I use Strictly Pangea. That's just personally what I, what I just started with and I've never changed. I like it, it, it works. I can't imagine if I used something else that would work better. There's just, it just works great, awesome. Um, if I know I'm breeding, I usually have the breeding formula on hand and I switch foods every, every feeding. So I don't always feed the same one. I usually have two or three on hand that I rotate in and out. Um, and my little guys enjoy it. And I just kind of leave them to do their own thing. Crested geckos are honestly one of the easiest geckos and reptiles in general to breed. They're super simple, they don't need heat. You just need to watch the watch them. You just need to watch them. You don't even have to watch them. You just pay attention to your geckos when you do see them. Look at signs, look at what's going on, ask questions, ask to yourself. And if it doesn't make sense, still ask someone online. Even ask me, I'll, I'm willing to help. Um, that being said, I'm going to put him back and we'll look at some babies that I bred. All right, so when I have babies hatch out, this is exactly how I'll set them up. Just a little shoebox with the clamping lid. It just kind of makes sure nothing gets out. I do usually two layers of paper towel on the bottom, a little water dish, and just a little tiny food dish. And they like to climb the walls, lots of little air holes, get some ventilation in there. I don't know if it's picking up the air holes, hard to tell. I use these little paper towel and toilet paper rolls. I get them from a couple different people, so I have a good little stockpile. Change them out if they get moldy, absolutely. I usually change them every feeding or every other feeding and paper towel eventually gets moldy too. Make sure you clean the tubs very nice. A couple fake plants from the craft store and of course every time you sell a gecko you can just reuse those plants. So it might seem like a little bit extra, you know, fake plants or whatever, but it's something that you can use forever and you just wash them and keep using them. And the way I label my babies, I put their name, who the parents are what their number is including the year and the lay date and the hatch date if i have it and i usually put two in here especially if it's a, you know it's, it's a two egg clutch it's usually how it works right and i will put both of them in here and i try to put them with a gecko that's just a little bit older that's maybe been out for a month or two that just kind of lets them know how to eat you know might teach them how to hunt crickets i see a lot of babies who don't um they don't understand crickets and if you don't teach them that young it seems like they never really want to eat crickets so that's something i've been working on is how do i get my babies to eat crickets something i forgot to mention is every once in a while when i'm feeding the adult breeders i will milk mix a little bit of extra calcium in the reason you feed the uh breeding formula is because it has extra calcium in it compared to the other formulas so that's just something i would do uh occasionally maybe once every two weeks definitely think it helps all right, so I really hope that helps. If anyone has any further questions or you know, you have information or you have something that you would like to even debate, leave a comment. I might respond to it, but if you do leave a comment and I think it's worthwhile, I'll probably put it in the next video that I make. Uh, next video is probably gonna be a little bit of a collection tour. 
uh, just going over all my animals. I think that'd be really cool. It'd probably be a little bit longer of a video, but I think it's definitely overdue for this channel. So if you commented about wanting this video, you know who you are. It's just one guy. Um, we're 38 subscribers. I think that's awesome. It would help if you're watching this, if you subscribe, it definitely helps out the channel. Like I said, I'll be doing lots of shows this year. I'll be making lots of content. I'm doing every other day videos now. I was doing every day. I'm doing every other day. I think they're going to get better. Um, definitely learning a lot with Photoshop and editing the videos and all that fun stuff. So make sure to comment, like, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. Like, shoot, why not? It helps. It helps me. <laughs> helps me. It lets you know when I post videos and I post knowledgeable videos, you know, if I don't know something or if I don't understand something, I'm going to let you know. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm not going to make something up on the spot. Make sure you hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, I just hit 300 followers on Instagram, so that was awesome. Uh, that's it all. That's all I got. February show is coming up quick. There'll be lots of content about that. It'll probably be a couple extra videos about that. Um, that's it. I hope you guys enjoy. If you're watching this on a Friday, enjoy your weekend. I know I will. Have a good one. See you next time.